This video looks at the start and end points for root loci plots. It's a reminder of where we're going. We've already covered what are root loci and why they're important, and now we're focusing on how do I compute and sketch root loci. Later on, we'll look at how we can use these for design. Now, the previous video introduced foundation principles, how are root loci defined, and that is basically the closed loop pole polynomial. This video is going to use those results to derive where root loci start and where they finish. Some background then, or reminder. So we said we're going to assume that the compensator, here's a compensator block M, can be written as K times M tilde, or more importantly, if I look at GM, I can write it as K GM tilde, and I can reduce this to the form KN over D. So I extract the gain K and then put all the dynamics in N over D, which combines the dynamics of the compensator and the system. Now the closed loop poles are determined from either of these two expressions, KN over D equals minus one or KN plus D equals zero. And that was covered in the previous video. Rule one then, how can I work out where the root lyso start, which is where are the poles, the closed loop poles, if k equals zero? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to first write the polynomial out, k n plus d equals zero, and then I'm going to say if k equals zero, then what I get left with is just d. So the closed loop poles are now given by d equals zero. So if k equals zero, the closed loop poles are given by d equals zero. Now d of s defines open loop poles. And therefore what you get, here's the key conclusion, the loci must begin from the open loop poles. And maybe that's stating the obvious, that if you've got no feedback if k equals zero, then clearly your poles are your open loop poles. Now, it's conventional to mark open loop poles with an x symbol. Next then, rule two. What happens if k tends to infinity? So I've got a very high gain. So again, I'll start by just reminding you of how the poles are defined. We're trying to solve kn plus d equals zero. What I'm going to do is let k go to infinity, but I'm going to assume that the closed loop poles are finite. And what this means is the values of s I need to satisfy this expression here are also finite. And that therefore tells you that d of s itself must be finite. So what have I got? I've got this expression I'm trying to solve. The modulus of kn equals the modulus of d, which you'll see is the same as this expression up here. And I've just told you that the modulus of d here, this value, is finite. And therefore, you get this conclusion, that if s is finite, is a valid closed loop pole, then k n of s must also be finite. Now, we did, however, have that k was going to infinity. So we've got k going to infinity, but kn tending to a finite number. And the only way you can satisfy both of these simultaneously is if n of s tends to zero. So what you find is that n of s equals zero defines attraction points for the closed loop poles with large k. So in summary, the loci or some of the loci, not all of them, must finish at the open loop zeros. And it's conventional to mark open loop zeros with a circle symbol. So let's just illustrate rule two by some detailed computation, if you're not convinced. So what I've got here is I've started with the system g equals s plus one over s, s plus two. And I've calculated the uh, closed loop pole polynomial. There it is, kn plus d equals zero, which gives me ks plus one plus s, s plus two equals zero. And what I'm going to do is solve this as k goes to infinity. So I've got a closed loop pole polynomial, pc equals s squared plus k plus two s plus k equals zero. And I'm going to use my quadratic formula to solve this. So I get s equals minus k plus 2 over 2 plus or minus the square root of k plus 2 squared minus 4k all over 2. And now, what I'm going to do next is remind you 
of our assumption. We're going to let k tend to infinity and we want to find out what happens to these roots as k goes to infinity. Well the most important thing is to look at what's in this bracket. What's in this bracket can be approximated by k squared because if k is going to infinity all the terms that are linear in k and all the constants become negligible. So what I get is s is approximately equal to minus k over 2 minus 1 plus or minus the root of k squared over 2 which gives you uh, minus 1 minus k over 2 plus or minus k over 2 and what does that tell you that you either get minus 1 or I can uh, put minus 1 minus k and the key thing is you'll see this confirms what we put for rule 2 one of the closed loop poles has gone to the open loop 0 which was at minus 1 so some questions then. Mark the starting endpoints on the root loci for the following system. And you'll notice that it's giving you a hint about how to start. First, compute the open loop poles. Here, they're given as minus 1 and minus 2. You can see that from here. And there's also 1 at 0, which you can see from here. There are no open loop zeros. So here's my diagram. You'll see I've marked up with a cross my 1 at 0. I've marked with a cross the 1 at minus 1, and I've marked with a cross the 1 at minus 2. There's no open loop zeros, there's nothing else I need to do. What about this one then? So let's go through the technique. First, calculate where the zeros are. So the zeros for this are at minus 4. Where are the poles? You'll see I've got a pole at 0 from the compensator, and poles at minus 1, minus 2, and minus 3 from the system. So now what I've got to do is mark these on a diagram using circles and crosses. So if I do that as my scale, so that's minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, then my 0 was at minus 4. Circle, that's where my 0 is. Had a pole at 0, use a cross. A pole at minus 1, use a cross. A pole at minus 2, use a cross. A pole at minus 3, use a cross. And so I'm, I've now marked start points and end points. Another example. So again, I'll just go down through the simple calculations. I've got a 0 at minus 3 and minus 0.5. And I've got poles. You can see them here. I've got a minus 1, a minus 1, and a minus 1. There's three of them in the same place. And at minus 4. So let's do our argon diagram again. Put some, uh, sorry, that was the wrong line. So put a few points on here. So mark where we've got. So that's minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4. So first, let's mark the zeros. I've got 1 at minus 0 0.5, that's there. And 1 at minus 3, that's there. You'll see nice big circles. I can see where they are. Where are the poles? I've got 3 at minus 1. Now it's important that you do three crosses. I know they don't look like they're exactly at minus one, but it's important visually that the viewer can see there are three poles there, and that's why I've marked three crosses. And the other one was at minus four. So some conclusions. We've introduced the first two rules of root loci, that is where do loci start, and finish when those are finite. So the loci start at the open loop poles, that's given by d of s equals zero, and they finish at the open loop zeros, that of n of s equals zero. And the key word there is some loci finish because you will have more closed loop poles than you have open loop zeros. The next video is going to look at the finishing points which are not finite.